Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, that is the last week we'll be saying that. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and next week is the celebration of Pentecost. And so we have moved through this season of Easter into Pentecost, and we have moved through these weeks of sabbatical. <laughs> I am Pastor Karen Olstead. I'm a retired pastor from Denver, and I've been one of the pastors who has been filling in while Pastor Margo is on her three-month sabbatical, and I think we're about halfway through um, her time away, and so we are praying that she has been blessed and refreshed during this time. We welcome our folks who are on our Zoom worship as well. Uh, we know that even though we are a different this is we all worship the same God, and we pray that we are one in that worship. We are so grateful for the seniors who have come to this morning after, get this, being at prom until three in the morning, some of them. So thank you, seniors, and welcome all of the parents, and I think some grandparents um, who are here. Um, them this week and um, to, we'll have that service of blessing and recognition a little bit later in the service. There will also be a chance to greet them following this service. Um, we have some punch and some cupcakes. Thank you, Becky Burris, um, for getting that um, to put together. Um, next week, Pentecost, we are changing our worship times to just one service. <clears throat> that will be at 10 o'clock, and that will go throughout the entire summer until um, Labor Day. So next week, March of uh, May 28th, 10 o'clock, one service. Also, then we um, announce, um, for the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing that our semi-annual congregational meeting is June 4th. It will be following the, the 10 o'clock worship service. The purpose of that is to vote for council members, to hear an update of the finances and the many building repairs that um, we've had this year. And so we invite you to join the congregation for this time together and review the ministries that we have um, had for the last six months. And um, Al Saunders will be leading that meeting. Any other announcements about that? No, okay. We will have more announcements um, in, at, at the end of the service, but those are just some to, to get us started. Um, we will continue then with our Thanksgiving for baptism, and we're going to turn and face the baptismal font. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, Holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, honor to you for waters that wash us, clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strength our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We turn back so that we can face the screen and sing, Build Us Up, Lord.
let us pray together. O God of glory, Son Jesus Christ suffered for us, descended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading is from First Peter, some assorted verses. Uh, I won't go through all of those. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may be also glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This time I invite some children forward for the children's message. You can have a seat just around the... Pastor Margot has been writing reflections every week for us. She actually wrote them, I think, before she went away. And this week she asked how we know Jesus' love. How do we know that Jesus loves us? Yes, the heart. That's one. Yeah. How do we know Jesus loves us? Does anybody know? You have something you might, yeah, I can see it on the tip of your tongue. Because he died for us, that's right. He loves us so much that he wanted our, and he blesses us, that's right. Yes, okay. One of the ways we, one of the reasons we know Jesus loves us is in um, the Bible. We have a song, Pastor Margot referred to a song that sometimes we sing, Jesus loves us. This I know for the Bible tells me so. So we know that Jesus does love us. And maybe, hmm, I wonder if our parents have anything to do with it. We know Jesus' love through our parents, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles. They tell us they love us. What are some other ways our parents let us know they love us? What else do our parents do for us that they show they love us? They hug us. That's right. Anything else? Any other ways you know your parents love you? Yep, yeah, hugs and kisses. Do they ever give you? Because they don't have fun. Because, say it again. Because they don't give hugs to us. The, yeah, they give hugs to us. Oh, and help us. They help us. Huh. Have any of you ever eaten a meal at your house? Who provides that? Your parents. Your parents, that's right. They cook for you. How about, do any of you uh, have beds in the bedroom? They buy them and they, and they make them, or oh, they make them your beds. Oh. And, and they can make the bed. And they make the bed. Without, without, without the sheets. Without the sheets. Oh my goodness. Okay. And you were going to say, Vivian? Yeah. 
They provide everything we need. Our food, our bedroom, our sheets, our beds. They even make our beds for us. Oh my goodness gracious. Our parents love us so much that they give us everything we need. They walk us to school, but that's what happens. They take us on vacations. So we know Jesus' love through our parents and our teachers. Our teachers love us because they do what do what do our teachers do? They teach us, they help us use our brains. Boy, these seniors out here and use our hearts. Oh my goodness, they help us use our hearts. That's right. These seniors that we have out here, seniors in high school, they've been using their brains so many years. Their brains have just been growing and growing and growing and they've been using their thoughts and their ideas. There's so many ways that we know that Jesus loves us. Let's give thanks for that. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to love us. Thank you that we have our parents and our grandparents and teachers to help us know Jesus' love. In his name we pray, amen. And now we're going to pass around our Change for Change buckets and we're going to give our offering to the veterans. Thank everybody for their generosity. You want to pass out a bucket? Let's Can we get them to come out? There you go. We've got one. Do you like yellow? Here we go. There's yellow. Every month we choose an organization for our Change to Change, and this month it is for our Veteran Services, the Ministry of our Rocky Mountain Senate. Someone's hand up there. All right. I think that looks like all. Thank you for collecting that. You have lots in there? Okay, all right. That's very generosity from our members. Thank you very much. And now we run for our gospel acclamation. to John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken some words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. 
Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. One of my visits to my parents several years ago, I was in the guest room getting dressed and I overheard my mother praying for me. I knew that every morning parents would conclude breakfast with the devotional, including praying for their family. But oh my goodness, to actually hear her say my name and offer words of hope and confidence, I was honored and moved. This morning, our reading is called Jesus's High Priestly Prayer. This is a continuation of the last two weeks of gospel readings. Jesus was telling his disciples goodbye they had eaten a meal together, and in John's account, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He told them about a new commandment to love each other as he loved them. Now today, he continues with a prayer to his Father. In his final hours, Jesus didn't try fancy footwork to get out of his mission on the cross. He didn't do one last traumatic miracle to awe his disciples, Jesus poured out his heart in prayer to God, and the disciples were present to overhear his conversation with God. Protect them, Father, so that they may be one as we are one, so that they may be one. On Monday, Thursday, when Jesus instructed the disciples to wash each other's feet, he commanded them to love one another so that everyone will know they are followers of Jesus, as in, they will know we are Christians by our love. Anyone remember that old hymn? This is the benchmark for revealing Jesus in our lives, loving one another. But that means loving across our differences, too. Loving those we don't care for. For people who don't share our political views or who don't have as much wealth as we do. Those who maybe don't speak our language. This is how the world will know we are followers of Jesus. It is through this love that the world will see our unity. Jesus was not talking about uniformity, but unity. We will love each other in various ways, but we are formed as a community to be united around the same mission, the same grace and mercy, the same bond of love that Jesus and the Father share. In this unity, we are able to reveal the love God has for the whole world, no exceptions. Next week, we will celebrate the beginning of the church at Pentecost. Jesus chose disciples and continues to choose us. The Holy Spirit then formed and empowered the church, us, for God's mission, which we know through Jesus' prayer. Please, God, make them one as we are one. Well, how are we doing in the unity area? Theologian Debbie Thomas wonders if the church, if we, are really bothered by all the division in the church. In our Lutheran body alone, there are so many different versions of Lutheran, it's difficult to keep up with all the splits. If we don't like life in one congregation, it is very easy to find another one down the road that will fit our style or who won't have so much conflict. But how can folks who are 
trying to know the grace and love that God offers, trust that the church represents that love when it battles with each other. How can those who in our cynical world that calls the church hypocritical, how do they look to the church when they see people excluded and hurt by church doctrine and actions? In no way do I intend to minimize the issues that result in the formation of new branches, but I wonder if we are concerned enough about how splintered the church is to work on our differences. Will the world get to know all that God is when we don't live our calling to be reconciled with each other? Or maybe the world will go someplace else to find a place to heal their wounds, other places or institutions that maybe tell lies about our God or who steer folks to self-help solutions that keep us from community that has been commissioned to share God's love. We are Christ's body in the world. Jesus teaches the disciples that he is one with the Father. They are inseparable. There is no scarcity, no exclusivity, no hostility in the bond of love that is the Father and the Son. And we are united to that same bond of love through the Holy Spirit. One of my seminary professors started his Reformation ser sermon by acknowledging the sin of Reformation. God has always intended for there to be one voice in the world that the world will hear, one heart, one mission to love and liberate the world from sin and death. So I was squirming in my seat listening to this sermon because I grew up in the school of rah, rah, aren't Lutherans cool for breaking away from that mean Catholic church? But our gospel lesson today reminds us that Jesus saw unity as his last dying wish. And he made this plea with his disciples listening in. Father, make them one as we are one. So what do we do? <laughs> How do we get started? Well, we acknowledge that our unity comes from God. Just as we heard last week, God gives us all we need to be in the world, and that includes being one. The same spirit of truth that is the bond of love between the Father and the Son is what unites us to each other and to the Father and Son. The spirit of truth will guide us in the ways of love. And as the Greek word last week, paraclete, advocate, implies, the Spirit will stand with us when we work towards reconciliation. The Spirit is God's own heart, and God's heart is all about love, mercy, grace, not divisiveness, factions, splitting, disagreeing to the point of leaving, or exclusion. So maybe we start by talking to our coworkers about their faith experience or the place they worship, or better yet, start with our own family members. Get the conversation going. What is our common calling? These conversations will remind us about all the other ways to worship God that may indeed help our faith grow deeper. We take the step to look at our own practice of hospitality and explore what reconciling means in the church. Will our inclusion welcome folks who have been hurt by the church? Folks who long for the community they can find only in the loving arms of the body of Christ. As our young people endeavor adventures away from their parents, they will hear many voices that will tempt them to meet their needs for community. Sometimes they will find church homes, but many other choices are available. This morning, seniors graduating from high school will overhear us. <laughs> Pray for them. We will give thanks to God for them. We will ask God to use the abilities they've been given to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world 
in new ways. And we will ask God to make them one in Jesus Christ. As they drive off after moving their children in, parents will ask God to keep them safe. This morning, the quilt the seniors receive will cloak them in the faith this congregation has nurtured. They will be surrounded by the memories of teaching, Sunday school, ministry opportunities, change for change, youth events, and worship. We trust that this foundation will encourage further seeking for the God who is one, the God who loves them and us and the whole world, the God who longs for our one voice that sings, lead us to do your holy will, form and shape your new creation. Build us up, Lord, build us up. As we guide and teach each other, help us to share your love with the world, with every sister and every brother. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, crown him with many crowns. and their parents and the fiber ministry and we'll have you all to stand and face the compilation parents if you want to stand behind your you're the fiber ministry all right and what i've asked um, the young people to do is introduce themselves and just say a brief sentence about what might be in the future. Did you say Hawaii? 
Oh my goodness, don't you need a chaplain to go with you? <laughs> you know, I'd be very happy. I'm Evan Shaw, and in the fall, I'm going to go to the Christian University in Utah. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm Joe Mello. Uh, in the fall, I'm going to the Holly Santa College in Illinois to study music education. Uh, I'm Joe Larson, and in the fall, I'm going to the NAU in Alabama. Okay, Holly Santa College is my alma mater. Woo woo! <laughs> so, good choice. All right, this morning we celebrate as these graduates look forward to new beginnings. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Some of you are going on to further your education. Others of our seniors may join the military services. Some may work with employers in this area or in another location. We trust that all of you will use your gifts in ways that will reveal the love that has raised you through your families in this congregation. Parents of these young people, you have fulfilled your promises at baptism to raise your child in the faith. We ask this congregation to join you in prayer as they continue in their journey. Together, parents and congregation members, do you promise to regularly lift these young people up in prayer? If so, answer, we do and we ask God to guide us. We do and we ask God to guide us. Let us pray. Dear God of all creation, we give thanks for the lives of these young people. We ask your continued guidance and protection on them as they enter a new period in their lives. Make your blessings known in their new jobs, studies, your supervisors, teachers, professors, classmates. Grant them the gifts of joy as they live among your faithful people, openness in hearing your word, thankfulness in sharing your supper, eagerness in sharing your good news of love, hunger for justice and peace and dedication in serving all people with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dave, did you have a couple of words? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, just a couple of words. Um, read these individuals up here, I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like I'm losing one of my kids here. Um, three of these, Joe, Aiden, and Sammy, uh, allow me to dip my toes into confirmation. Um, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, example or opportunity. And so I know we have some folks that are in confirmation now or graduated confirmation that have benefited from this, or you can blame them. Uh, <laughs> and so it's been awesome to watch uh, you three grow up uh, in, in the church, in your faith, and just in life. And so I just wish you all the best. Jomelo, I know you're friends with these two. <laughs> you're on a good path as well. So, you know, I didn't get to know you, but man, if you're with these two, you're doing well. So I really wish you all the best of luck, uh, God's grace and love to, to shine over you. And I really hope that you know, the, the fiber ministries and the things that they provide you take that love and that grace and the, the caring that comes from this community and use it as an opportunity to show you more, to give you more when you are in a, in a place that you don't want to be. So God bless you. And I really do wish you the best. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Oh, Nancy's not here as well, I'm sorry. They have got this for the most marvelous job. All I had to do was offer. 
have to have a healthy Saturday out there. And let's not do that. I hope you all enjoy and snuggle and know that every time you pick up that quilt, this church is back in you. Congratulations. <laughs> And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may return to you. Thank you again. Let us rise as together we prepare in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is in heaven and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, to be eternally begotten with the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and the Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O God. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness, especially Corey and his family, Pastor Terry, Pastor Caitlin, Pastor Andrea, Pastor Mark, Kirsten, Jill, Teresa, Jack, Mandy, the Smith family, Bob, Janae, Devon, Randy, Carol, Mike, Cheryl, Andrew, Diane, the Wyatt family, the Brown family, Mary, Chris, Tom, and others we name out loud or silently in our hearts. Surround us with your love and peace. Provide safe travels for Pastor Margo and Diane Montoya as they continue to experience your presence in the living waters of this sabbatical. Hear us, O oh God. 
We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. We give thanks for the gifts you have given all of those who are graduating from high school and college this year. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff and council. Hear us, O oh God. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share. We pray together. Generous God, in this year you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you worshiping at home, we invite you to have a piece of cracker or bread and wine or grape juice. Know that the body and blood of Christ is given for you. Here in the same 
Jordan, you'll receive a piece of bread and the, the, the light colored is the juice and the red is the wine and we'll follow the um, directions from the ushers.
We rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. I guess you actually sit for announcements now then. Uh, next Sunday, as Pastor Karen mentioned earlier, we will be meeting at 10 a.m. and we will have one service. Um, and then we will also be celebrating uh, the Pacific Towns of the Sousa. Um, again, we'll have one service next weekend. On June 4th, we are going to have our semi annual meeting around 11.15. We're going to have a lot of things going on. And I believe I'm going to invite Sherry Hughes to come talk about the Water Weekend Retreats. Good morning. Good morning. What a wonderful morning to be here. Uh, so special. And I imagine that many of you sitting here are just buzzing because you have so many things going on right now in your lives with the end of school, even if it's not a graduation year for you. Um, the start of summer, we just have a lot of plates we're spinning. And as um, was mentioned, Pastor Marco is about halfway through her sabbatical. How many of you are just a little envious? <laughs> just a little, okay? So here is, here is the deal with this water weekend coming up in June. That is your mini sabbatical, okay? Pastor is on this journey that we collectively got to send her on okay and we are also on a journey as she's there we're just still here <laughs> okay but that weekend in june the 16th through the 18th is a chance for you to step away to unplug to enter the sanctuary space and to refresh and renew and maybe even grow and change a little, learn some new things about yourself, which is exactly what Pastor Margo is doing right now. She just gets a little longer to enjoy it. Um, or maybe she has to go a little deeper than we're going to be able to. Um, but I am here today to invite you to sign up so we know who's coming um, the 16th, 17th, and 18th. If you are only able to join us for Friday evening, that's fine. If you're only able to be a part of Sunday, that's fine. We would love for you to dip your toes into a full mini sabbatical and be here Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but we'll take whatever we can get of you um, and invite you to embrace the opportunity to rest and renew. Um, during the day on Saturday, we're going to have opportunities and space to, to enter into some new practices for yourself. Um, maybe you'll decide play is something you need a little more of in your life. We're gonna have room for that. Maybe you need to reignite your creative side. We'll have some opportunities for that. And contemplation. When was the last time you sat and just was? We'll have opportunities and guidance around some of those and introduce you to some new practices that you can take with you to uh, weave into your ways. So that's what the Water Weekend is about. Um, there is a sign up sheet by the door on your way out if you think that you um, can make it to one of those. Um, just check mark which, which um, portion of the weekend, if not all, that you can attend so that we know how many to plan for. And if you have any questions, I'll be around. Um, we're meeting between services, the, the volunteer leadership team. If you would like to be a part of this in a deeper way than just participating, join us. We'll see you then. Thanks. Any He was going to remind you to come and join us um, you know, to celebrate the seniors with some punch and cake. Isn't that what you were going to announce? Let's rise. <laughs> the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead 
bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. We end our service with On Our Way Rejoicing.